Your Highness, thank you so much for joining CNBC. I want to kick off by asking you to address, um, frankly, the disconnect we're seeing uh, between the politics here and what's actually going to be happening on the ground as U.S. President Joe Biden makes his arrival here in Jeddah. He's had to justify, seemingly, his trip to this part of the world, not just in that op-ed with the Washington Post, but again in comments overnight. Why is it a problem for anyone, for the U.S. president, to make the decision to come to Saudi Arabia, in your view? Well, thank you very much for having me, Ms. Gamble. As you know, uh, President Biden, uh, in my view, is, is coming as a much diminished president than when he was first elected. Uh, as an example, uh, on energy issues, uh, he came in with a policy to uh, stop uh, completely uh, fossil fuel usage, not only in the United States, but worldwide. Uh, and now he is finding himself having to uh, rely on fossil fuels uh, as a means of meeting the energy shortage that has come about, not just only because of the Ukraine war, but also because of U.S. policy itself that shut down um, pipelines and stopped issuing, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, discovery of oil on, on U.S. soil. So that is one aspect of the reason why he might be coming here. Another, of course, is what he said himself. He's a man who, who says he's seeking peace, uh, and uh, peace in the, in the Middle East has been so elusive for the past century, if I might say, that uh, he feels he might have a hand in, in uh, promoting uh, peace in the area. I hope he succeeds there. Alas, yeah, the, the, the deck is stacked against him. Uh, his visit to Israel, I think, has shown that uh, he is not much um, using his, his trip to force Israel, for example, to comply with the United Nations Security Council resolutions, whether 242 or 338 or subsequent uh, resolutions that the U.S. itself has supported in the past. Um, so that is something that uh, he has his hands full to convince the Saudi leadership and the Saudi people that not only is he sincere in what he is doing, but also that uh, he is coming not just to recalibrate Saudi-American uh, relations, but also uh, to uh, engage uh, seriously with Saudi Arabia in meeting these issues of peace, energy, uh, terrorism, Iran's uh, destructive role in the area. Um, these are uh, uh, files that are full of, of, of uh, baggage from the past, and uh, to, un to unentangle them, is going to be quite a, a, a project for, for the president. When you and I last spoke, we actually touched on the subject of Afghanistan. The withdrawal had just taken place, and you expressed your great disappointment and even horror to me of how that situation was handled. In your view, has the Biden team made any significant improvement in their foreign policy in this part of the world since that time? Well, um, since then, yeah, and you We've heard the talk, but we, we haven't yet seen the walk. Um, and uh, the, uh, you know, uh, maintaining Saudi-American uh, friendship and, uh, and uh, mutual benefit uh, is all good to talk about, but uh, visible and, and uh, realistic implementation of those sentiments is what is required, in my view. And it's not just a matter of, 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 of weapon sales and, uh, and... When you think about this with regards to the use of energy as a weapon, obviously that's a question that I asked Russia's president way back in October, and we've seen that narrative playing out over the last several months before and now after his invasion of Ukraine. There are charges that Saudi Arabia, as the de facto leader of OPEC, has been using energy as a weapon as well, not just to fill its coffers, we're talking about a country that's going to have a budget surplus for the first time in a decade as a result of these higher oil prices, but also in terms of being able to throw its weight around the world. How do you respond to that as a former official? Well, yeah, the, uh, people will, will, will use whatever resources they have to benefit their own people and hopefully uh, for the benefit of mankind. Um, America is a practitioner of, of boycotts and, and sanctions, uh, economic and, and otherwise using its own resources as a means of uh, influencing others to, to come its way, if you like. 
So it's not surprising that not just for Saudi Arabia, but for other countries as well, if they have a resource that is valuable to the world, that they will try to maximize the benefit that they get from it. Prices in Saudi Arabia, high oil prices are, are, are not acceptable in Saudi Arabia. As you know, Saudi Arabia's consistent position on oil prices is that they should be moderate and uh, they should be available to not just the rich countries, but also to the poorer countries, whether in Africa, Latin America, or Asia. And so the kingdom has always been uh, a country that tries to stabilize oil prices to make them affordable to everybody. Uh, in the meantime, uh, circumstances have come about whereby the, the, the America needs to engage with the kingdom in order to stabilize these oil prices. We saw three years ago, for example, when Mr. Trump was, was, was in power, he also had uh, to uh, engage with Saudi Arabia and Russia at the time to stabilize uh, oil prices. So it is not surprising to see that Mr. Biden also will try to attempt that with the Saudi leadership. Absolutely. When you think about what happens next with regards to this relationship uh, between the United States and Saudi Arabia, obviously you can look at this with a bit of more of a historical perspective than most, not only in terms of that oil embargo back in the early 70s, um, but also, of course, the situation in Afghanistan, the evolving relationship with the Russians uh, post-Cold War and certainly with the OPEC Plus agreements. And when you take a step back and you think about this a bit more broadly, it seems as if Saudi Arabia can do without um, the approval frankly, of the United States um, in terms of their foreign policy narrative. Do you see that trend continuing? I think the, the issue of, of the relationship is, is overridden by Saudi Arabia's commitment to the strategic relationship. We've worked with all American administrations uh, through tough times, uh, sometimes uh, and harmoniously, other times at odds with each other. Uh, you mentioned the, the oil embargo back in 1973. And yet, uh, throughout all of this up and down, uh, the kingdom has always uh, clung and, and, and firmly held in its hands the view that uh, America is a strategic partner. And that is still the case. And you just look at the, the, the statements that have come out from King Salman and Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. They always consider the United States as a strategic uh, ally. And that will continue to be the, the case. One thing I think, uh, and I've been following how Mr. Biden has been deluged by U.S. punditry, if you like, on what to say and what to demand and what to uh, exact from uh, from Saudi Arabia, as if you know he doesn't know better. Uh, but uh, it's fascinating, isn't it? Isn't think, it? Yeah, well, uh, it's American politics after all, and we've gone through that in in, in the past. Uh, what I would say to him is that, you know, uh, if you're talking about human rights, you know, America is not a paragon of virtue in those things. Um, it has its own human rights issues. And so instead of shouting at each other, we should engage in trying to improve uh, what uh, we would be on the ground for both the people of the United States and for, the, for Saudi Arabia. So what I would say is, you know, um, any visitor, and not just the, the, the American president who, who has complaints about Saudi issues like human rights and so on, uh, please get off your high horse and look at where you are and engage with us, um, hopefully politely. And, and uh, you know, we're a country that is developing and trying to improve our situation and look at the record and not just simply at the rhetoric coming from American punditry. Your Royal Highness, thank you so much for joining CNBC. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gamble.